Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn about relationships in your database, how to relate data from different tables together in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Simone from Bridgeport, Connecticut, one of my Platinum members. Simone says, I'm a realtor. I'm in the process of setting up my first Access database. I've been using Excel for years to track my customers and the houses they purchased. Once in a while, I get a customer who has purchased multiple houses. That happens. Should I make a separate entry for each of them in my customer table? It seems like this would be an awful lot of duplicated data. Simone, you are correct. Most people are familiar with Excel. You just put stuff in rows, right? But... The power of Microsoft Access is that it is a relational database. You can have multiple tables that are related to each other. For example, in your case, you'd have one table for people, right, your customers, and another table for the homes they purchased. This is one of the most important concepts to understand in Access once you move beyond the beginner phase. In my beginner classes, I primarily teach people how to work with single tables, build forms for them, reports, queries, and so on. But once we get into the expert classes and my expert level one class, I start teaching about relationships. So let me give you a general overview of how relationships work. Now, there's a very scientific and geeky definition for exactly what makes up a relational database. But for all intents and purposes, a relational database has the data organized and can be accessed according to relationships between the tables. So, for example, you've got customers and houses they purchase. You've got customers and cars. You've got orders and products, right? Different things, different tables that are related together. Relational databases help to minimize errors, increase efficiency, and eliminate duplicate data. You don't have to have your customer's information in each record if you have their house information in that same table, right? You have to copy their information. Let's see how that works. Okay, so in our database, we're going to be tracking customers and the vehicles they own. Okay, here's Joe Smith, and he's got one car, 1995 Ford Taurus. Don't laugh at the year. I copied all these screenshots from the very first time I covered relationships way back. I think 2002 was the first time I did this, and I've been using the same screenshots every time. I, this is probably the fourth or fifth time I've redone this lesson. But the screenshots are valid. And yeah, I mean, I live in Florida, so sometimes you see 1995 cars on the road down here. <laughs> so anyways, you're tracking this, let's say, in Excel, or you've got one table in your access database. You've got Joe Smith's phone number, address, and then his car. Okay, no problem. Now, Joe Smith buys a second car. All right, you've got to copy Joe Smith again, his phone number, same address, 1997 Ford Escort. Do they even make those anymore? I don't even know if those are still on the road. Okay, so now he's got two cars. Third car. As you can see, we've got a lot of duplicated information. Now I add his buddy, Bill Jones. Bill's got two cars as well. So you can see there how a lot of information is duplicated between records. Now, if you want to change, let's say, Joe Smith's address, you've got to make sure you change it in three different places. The exception, of course, is if you want to track something that is important at the time. For example, where an order was shipped. That's an exception, and I cover that in my expert classes too. If you want to put on an order, for example, the customer's address at that time, that's fine. But if you just want Joe Smith's current phone number and address, this is a lot of wasted, duplicated information. So the better way to store this information is to use two tables in what's called a one-to-many relationship. Here we have one customer to many vehicles, right? Joe Smith's information shows up there just once, and the vehicles are each in their own table. And how do we know which customer owns which vehicle? Well, we use a customer ID. That's the primary key for the customer table. Joe Smith's customer ID is 101. Then we'll use that 101 in the other table, in the vehicle table, to track who owns each vehicle. See how that works? Each of the other customers has their own unique customer ID, right? Bill Jones is 102. Sam, I guess that's Sam Price. <laughs> I, I don't think I caught that when I first recorded this and it just kind of stuck. Uh, Sam Price is 103. And you can see by looking at the vehicle tables now, right, who owns what car. And we can relate that back to the customer information. We don't have to copy 
all of Joe Smith's information onto each car record. Now we got two types of key fields. There's a primary key and a foreign key. And you don't really have to remember these terms. Remember primary key, obviously. Foreign key is the primary key in the other table. Let me show you. Okay, here you can see with the little key symbol the primary key for each of those tables. Now the primary key in the customer table is that customer ID, 101, 102, 103. Now, since that's the primary key in the customer table, it becomes the foreign key in the vehicle table. See that? You can see that key right here. That indicates what customer owns each of those cars. That's the foreign key. Why is it a foreign key? Because it relates back over to this table. Now, the vehicle table has its own primary key, right? And if it's an auto number, it just starts at 1, 2, 3, and counts up. So this 2003 Ford Focus, for example, the primary key, it's vehicle number 3, and it belongs to 101. So that's Joe Smith. See how the relationships work back and forth between the tables? Now, there's three basic kinds of relationships. Yeah, there's more, but these are the three you got to worry about when you're getting started with relationships. There's one-to-one, one, one to many and many-to-many. Many. By far, one-to-many is the most popular type. Let's talk about all, all three of them. All right, so one-to-one one is when you've got one record in one table and only one matching record in another table. For example, let's say you've got one payment method for each customer. You don't want to have multiple payment methods, just one. All right, Joe Smith, and there's his payment method. But you want to keep the payment methods in a different table, maybe for security purposes, I don't know. Okay, you can also do this. I do this a lot with what I call extended customer information. Let's say you've got your primary customer table. It's got all your customers, phone number, address, that kind of basic stuff, right? But then you've got other information, maybe some random questions that you don't ask everybody. You don't get them for everybody, right? Shoe size, number of children, favorite pizza toppings, those kinds of things. You'd put that in a second extended customer table, and you'd only have one set of responses for each customer. All right, one-to-one -one is actually kind of rare. I don't use a one-to-one -one relationship that often. One-to-many is the big one, right? You got one customer, many vehicles, all right? One customer, many contacts. You can do, if you want to have multiple phone numbers or multiple addresses, you can put those in separate tables, right? If you want to have, you know, four different phone numbers available for a customer, you could do cell phone, home phone, work phone, and, and so on. Put that in a second table. That way you're not limited to just three phone number fields in your primary customer table. You could do vendors to products, right? One vendor, he sells multiple products. A many-to-many -many relationship is a little more complicated. I cover this later on in the expert series. Again, not as common as a one-to-many. Many-to-many indicates that many people can drive many cars, but each car can also be driven by multiple drivers. See, it's a little more complicated. Another good example is students and classes, right? Each student can enroll in multiple classes at a college or whatever, but each class can have multiple students. And in order to properly do a many-to-many -many relationship, you need a third table called a junction table. Here, for example, you can see that customer 101, Joe Smith, can drive cars 1 and 3, right? Car 1 is the Ford Taurus, car 3 is the Ford Focus. But you can also go backwards. You could say car 3, the Ford Focus, can be driven by 101 and 102. See, there's a 3 here and a 3 there. See? And it can be driven by both of these people. So it's a many-to-many -many relationship. It goes in both directions. That's a lot more complicated. Don't worry about it. Again, I cover this in one of my expert classes. I'll be doing a tech help video on many-to-many -many relationships, too. It is, it is something I get asked quite a lot. And I got whole courses on it. But I like to give you guys the, the, the general overview here in the tech help videos. Here's another example. In my tech help database, for example, I have customers and contacts. Now, a contact is every time you talk to somebody, right? So you can see right here, customer ID, right? Number one, me. Okay, and right here you can see customer ID. There's the foreign key, one and one, that's me. So contact one, contact two, called about a job, came in for an interview. Okay, the next contact is customer ID two. That's James Kirk, and he fought Klingons. So you can see how the relationships between these two tables work, right? Just by setting that ID. Now, there are generally two ways to show a parent record with the related child records.
For example, we've got customers and contacts, right? Customer is the parent table. Contact is the child table, right? The related table. The many side of a one-to-many relationship. Now, you can either open a form and find specific data, and you can do that with the, uh, the control wizard, right? Or you can use a subform. And I show how to do both of these things in my Tech Help blank database video, which I'll put a link down below. Go watch that. It's very good. I'll mention it again in a few minutes. All right? Open a form and find specific data. So you've got the customer form, right? And on the customer form, you got a button here to open up the contacts. Boom, there it is. Little contact form opens up showing just that customer's contacts. All right, not all of them, just the ones for this guy. The second way to show related records is to use a subform. And here I embedded that contacts form inside of the parent customer form. Okay, here's the tech help free template. Again, free download from my website. You got your customer list. Open up a customer, right? Here's the customer information. That's the parent record. Open up contacts, and you'll see there's the related contacts for just this customer. If you go to a different customer, Jim Kirk, hit the contacts button, right? Fought Klingons. There's his contacts. One to many. Each customer can have many contacts. Okay? There's also the customer with contacts subform. And you can go through the different customers down here and see each of them have the option to have multiple contacts. They don't all have contacts in here. Right? Deanna Troy, you know, read my mind. And so on. Okay? And in this contact table, there is, well, it's hidden here. You don't necessarily have to see the ID here. But it's stored in the contact table, right? Read my mind. Customer ID 3 goes in there. That's, that relationship is actually managed by the subform itself. And again, I show how to do all of this in my other free videos. I'll put links down below. Here are the videos. One is open a form and find specific data that will allow you to open a second form and show related values. Or you can use subforms. I got videos for that too. All right, I'll put links down below. Also, make sure you go watch my blank template video. It shows you how I built that tech help free template from the ground up. The second video in that series goes into making the customers with contacts. Very popular video, and it talks a lot more about relationships. If you want the full in-depth relationship lesson, access expert level one. All right, take my beginner course first. Right, there's nine levels of that. Then expert level one, relational database concepts, and a lot more detail. Primary and foreign keys, types of relationships, ad hoc query joins, relational combo boxes, all kinds of stuff. That's all on Access Expert Level 1. And, of course, I've got a full relationship seminar. As you can see, relationships, it's a pretty in-depth topic. I just scratched the surface in this video. All right? I cover all the different types of relationships, including something I call a self-join that's relating a table to itself. That's good with family relationships, for example, right? A person to their mother, their father. Those are other people in the same table, right? It's just got one table. It's got both the primary and the foreign key in it. Plus, you can do employees to supervisors, right? Again, they're both employees. A supervisor is a type of employee. The table relates to itself. There's all kinds of different relationships. I cover them in detail in my relationship seminar. If you want to learn more about relationships for the members in the extended cut, I will talk about self-joins, global relationships, that's setting up relationships on a database level, referential integrity, that's preventing child records from existing that don't have parent records. You can't have a, an order without a customer, for example. That's an option. You can turn that on or off. And then we've got cascade updates and deletes. That's if you delete a customer, it also deletes all of his contacts. That can be dangerous. We'll talk about that more. But that's in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And gold members can download the databases from the Tech Help templates. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut Tech Help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. 
These are the full-length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual, Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.